Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin, a fantastic, amazing miniseries, but also a sad one because all of our beloved, well, practically all of our beloved turtle characters end up getting brutally killed. <laughs> April is the only survivor of the original group. Everyone else dies. And uh, this video is going to cover every single death, how they died, and we're actually going to do it chronologically in terms of the timeline. So with that out of the way, let's get on with this. Very first character to die is Raphael. And we see Raphael's death in a flashback. So the truce between the Foot Clan and the Turtles and the mutants and stuff like that, it, it's destroyed. Something happened because both sides are blaming each other for breaking the truce. Doesn't matter. Truce is broken. The Turtles end up getting ambushed. Splinter gets brutally attacked and... They believe that he's going to die. So, of course, Raphael, hearing that his father figure is most likely going to die, that he's lost too much blood, he just gives in to his anger, and he crashes a Foot Clan meeting that Karai is holding. And he basically just goes on a one-man crusade and starts slaughtering all of these Foot Clan soldiers. However, the Foot Clan soldiers give it as good as they get. They start stabbing him with spears. They start shooting him with arrows. And Raphael takes all this damage. He, he doesn't come out of this unscathed. But he's able to, to slaughter everyone. He slaughters every single Foot Clan soldier that's in this meeting. All that's left is Karai. And so we get our showdown between Karai and Raphael. And the showdown eventually ends with the two of them falling off of the pier and into the water. And as they're falling into the water... Raphael happens to stab Karai in the back, looks like through her heart, just at the same time that Karai grabs one of Raphael's kunai and jabs it under his chin, right, right through his head. And so this moment puts Karai into a coma that she never wakes up from, and Raphael in the meantime dies. There we go, there's his death. So Raphael goes out in a badass blaze of glory, Basically, he goes out like uh, Zabuza from Naruto, where he just goes on a one-man crusade, slaughtering a bunch of uh, Foot Clan soldiers, takes on their leader, Karai, is able to put her into a permanent coma, but at the cost of his life. So Raphael's death happens due to a bunch of wounds sustained during the fight with the clan, a kunai through the head, which basically kills him and... I mean, if he doesn't die from that, which I don't know how, he drowns. So it, it, it's all a number of things. But in the end, Raphael dies from a kunai through the head. Then our next characters of fall are Leonardo and Casey Jones. So at this point in time, the ninjas and what's left of their allies are holding out inside this base with honeycuts. And Baxter hears that they're there. And he sends a huge army of, uh, of robotics to go and try to kill the turtles and bring back Honeycut. And so we just see this showdown where Leonardo and Casey Jones basically tell everyone else to leave. They tell Michelangelo, Casey tells them, like, I need you to go protect my wife and um, we need you to keep Honeycut safe. So they basically shut the door on them and it's just Leonardo and Casey Jones and the two of them start fighting all of these robots. And no matter what they do, every time they smash down one robot, five more pop up. And it's just, it's not a, are we gonna survive this? It's more of a, how long are we gonna be able to hold these off? How, how much time can we buy our loved ones? And eventually, um, Baxter's like, all right, enough of this. He sends a huge swarm of uh, his robotics, presses a button that detonates all of them, and we just have this huge explosion, and Casey Jones and Leonardo are dead. So they, they die in the explosion, their body buried in the burning rubble. Uh, Honeycuts gets destroyed, but he's still alive to make an appearance in the, uh, the future present. But there we go, that's how Casey Jones and Leonardo end up getting killed they basically pull a 300 where they uh they know they're gonna die and they're just gonna see how much time they can buy their loved ones to make their escape 
Eventually, they get overrun by robots. Baxter hits the self-destruct on them. They blow up, killing Casey Jones and Leonardo. Our next characters to die are Donatello and Splinter. So this happens after Leonardo and Casey Jones are dead. Michelangelo um, is out doing his own thing. What happened to Michelangelo is uh, the, the rubble, basically the blast, even though he wasn't in the vicinity, he was still somewhat close by. He gets blasted somewhere, um, gets buried under rubble. He assumes everyone else has died, so he goes to find himself. Like He, he goes to, to train, and basically he, he wants to get revenge for his family's death. Meanwhile, Splinter and Donatello go back to Japan where they're trying to figure out like why did the treaty between them and the Foot Clan get destroyed. They meet up with the samurai group who are going to be making a, a treaty with the Foot Clan. But they want Splinter and Donatello to come with them because they're, they're a little bit worried that this might be a trap. And they end up being right. It ends up being a trap. And so we see a bunch of Foot Clan samurai showing up and they surround our, our heroes and we have a, a fight scene. And it's a pretty cool, brutal fight scene. We see Splinter lopping the heads off of these soldiers. We see Donatello impaling some of them through the face with his staff. But eventually, at some point, the Foot Clan leader realizes that their army is being destroyed. So he has his archers just uh, rain down a hail of arrows. And right as they're about to do that, Splinter throws his sword and pills the leader through the neck, but leaving himself open. And Donatello puts himself in front of Splinter and takes the hail of arrows into him. And another hail comes and takes down Splinter. And that is how our heroes fall. Our heroes fall from a rain of arrows. So Donatello and Splinter are now dead. Their death comes at the hands of the Foot Clan, just raining a bunch of arrows onto them. And um, yeah, they, they, they get their, their hero burial from the samurai that have survived. And now we're going to cut to uh, our future present. I say our future present because uh, the present day in this series is in the future. So I'm just going to say future present. Before we go to the deaths in the future present, we have to talk about all of our mutagen friends and enemies as well. So our Bebops, our Rocksteadies, our Leatherheads, they're all dead. We don't see how they die though. All we uh, are informed is that sometime between the past and the future present, our main antagonist in this series, Oroku Hiroto, who is the grandson of Shredder and the son of Karai, he has taken leadership of the Foot Clans, he has taken leadership of Manhattan, and he has led a genocide against every non-human. So we don't actually see the deaths of Leatherhead, Rocksteady, Bebop, and all the rest of the, the mutagens, but we are told that they're all dead because there are no more mutagens left in the, the future presence. Yeah, um, that's just going to be more of like a little footnote because we don't actually see their deaths, but we're just told uh, that, they, that they happen. So everyone else is dead. The only mutagen left in this uh, present future, in this future present is Michelangelo, our last Ronin. So with that said, let's go to the uh, future deaths. And the first one is going to be Professor Honeycutt. So Honeycutt has been somewhat fixed. April has been working on him for decades, and she um, basically has him fixed enough so that the plan is for Michelangelo and the resistance to storm Baxter's base. They're going to put Professor Honeycutt into Baxter's machines and basically create a virus to destroy Baxter's machines and uh, Baxter himself. So in this future present, Oroku Hiroto uh, doesn't really use humans as um, soldiers, he, he kind of has some human soldiers like in his base, but most of the Foot Clan ninjas are robots created by Baxter, and they're the ones going around policing the city and terrorizing everybody. So April and the Resistance realize if we can destroy Baxter and the robots, it'll make us storming uh, Hiroto's base a lot more easier. 
So they storm Baxter's base first. Uh, eventually, April is able to make her way into the uh, the main computer, and she hooks up Honeycut, and basically tells Honeycut like, "I need you to use all your power and just wipe out these robots." And Baxter eventually shows up. He finds Honeycut. He's pleased at first because he believes that with Honeycut he can gain even more power, but Honeycut. Uh, he, he resists and he basically absorbs a whole bunch of energy and uses it to create a huge blast that blows up Baxter. So this is also the death of Baxter. It basically shreds him into a bunch of tiny pieces. Honeycut is destroyed. Baxter's base is blown up and the uh, robots that Hiroto is controlling is no more. So now it's just Hiroto and his army of human ninja clan members. And then we get the next death. And the next death is Kurai. So I'm not going to go over what happened with Kurai, but we saw what happened earlier. Kurai fought Raphael. Raphael put her into a coma and she's been put into stasis all this time. And throughout this entire series, we're led to believe that Hiroto is doing this because he wants to find some way to eventually heal his mother and bring her back. Instead, it turns out that he doesn't. He only kept her alive out of spite. He wanted to keep her lost and alone in her coffin while he conquers the city, while he does what she could never do. And uh, now that he believes that he's controlled the city, he uh, decides to kill her. So he unleashes his blades from his fists, stabs it through the pod that Karai is in and impales her. And now Karai is dead. So Karai gets killed by her own son. And now we get our final two deaths, which is Oroku Hiroto and Michelangelo the Last Ronin. So this happens in the final issue. We get a huge fight scene between the two of them. It's amazing. Uh, if you want more details on the fight, you can go watch my video on the, the review for this issue. But we, we just get a, a really cool fight scene. During the fights, Michelangelo is taking damage. He, he's getting sliced. He's getting cut. But he's able to make some progress. At first, he, he's not able to do any injury to Hiroto. But eventually, he, he ends up finding Hiroto's weakness. And the two of them are just dealing damage to each other. Eventually, the fight ends up into the sewers. And eventually, from the sewers, they get flushed out to the outskirts of the city where they had their final showdown in the uh, the sewer muck. And during this final showdown, Michelangelo just beats the crap out of Hiroto. And he um, grabs Hiroto, and he's going to finish him off when Hiroto does a suicide attack. He basically grabs at his heart, it looks like. Um, there's a electrical ball sphere around them that zaps both of them. And Hiroto falls into the muck, face down, and drowns. So Hiroto dies by getting beamed by Michelangelo, by zapping, and then by drowning in shit, basically. Um, Michelangelo, meanwhile, crawls out of the muck. He, uh, he's wounded. He's dying. But he's able to stay alive long enough for April and Casey Jr., to show up um, he's able to say his farewell to them and he leaves Casey with a book of all the teachings that he has taken in from his uh, from his father splinter from his brothers and just from his journey and he hands it off to Casey so that she can continue their legacy and that's the end of Michelangelo and there you go there's the death of everyone uh, how everyone dies in the last Ronin it's very sad but before you get too upset, I will say that we leave with the happy notes. Everyone is dead, but they, um, they're they together in the afterlife. They're happy, and um, yeah, eventually they know that they're going to see the rest of their loved ones at some point. But there you go. There's all the deaths of everyone in the last Ronin, and um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope to see you guys next time. Take care. Later. So what'd you guys think of that video? I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe, hit that bell for a notification, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, 
And if you did enjoy the video, thank you for watching it this far, and I hope the next video is more to your liking. Feel free to check out the playlist that you guys see, and I hope to see you guys next time. Later.